This episode was brought to you by Hunter Industries, the global leader in landscape irrigation and outdoor lighting. At Hunter, our core values of family, social responsibility, innovation, and customer satisfaction drive everything we do. Our commitment to our valued customers, partners, and the industry at large is stronger than ever before. While we cannot connect face-to-face, Rest assured that we are here with you every step of the way to support your business with world-class products, tools, and training. The game has changed, the partnership hasn't. Learn more at HunterIndustries.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bring You Water to Life. My name is John Farner. I'm at you alone today, so I appreciate you taking the time to downloading our podcast. Apologize, it's been so long. Hope everyone is doing well and safe during the continued pandemic and the COVID-19 in 2020. Uh, Before we get to our guests today, I wanted to first say thank you to our sponsor, Hunter Industries. We'll talk a little about Hunter with our guests, but I appreciate their continued support for the Bringing Water to Life podcast. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to bring you this type of content in this digital format. So really appreciate that. I want to take the time to update everyone on some of the things that we are working on at the Irrigation Association. As you all well know by now, uh, the 2020 Irrigation Show is canceled and is not going to be held in person, but we are developing a lot of new con- digital content for everyone to enjoy on their own time, live, you name it. So first and foremost, some of the old stalwarts of the irrigation show are not going anywhere. So the new product contest, we are having a new product contest, looking forward to seeing all of the latest and greatest irrigation technologies that are out there. So we thank everyone who's participating in the new product contest. Stay tuned for more information on how you can participate, view the products, listen to the judges. We're going to try to have this as interactive as possible. So stay tuned for more information regarding our new product contest. Also, IA University, beginning November 30th. This is Education Week. That would have been the week that we would have all convened in San Antonio, Texas. However, we're going to be delivering that content and education to you virtually. All that information is available at irrigationshow.org. So everything you could have gotten in person for education opportunities during IA University, all of our classes, you can get digital. You can get from the comfort of your own home. So check out more information at irrigationshow.org. Now, a few of the newer things we're working on. This is kind of exciting. Uh, With great challenges come new opportunities, right? So one thing we're working on is Industry Insights. Industry Insights is the old technical program at the Irrigation Show and Education Week. Uh, We rebranded it last year, had some more interactive opportunities for folks, some new and different folks presenting. We're all thrust into a pandemic situation and safer at home initiatives. So what we're doing is bringing that content to you digitally as well. So beginning this week, you can download, you can register for all new content with industry insights on the landscape side, as well as the ag side. So we're going to have 20 plus sessions delivered to you twice a week, one landscape, one ag at the, from the comfort of your own home. So we encourage you to check that out. It begins in October, begins in about a week from now. So we're going to see all of the newest, latest, and greatest initiatives regarding all parts of the irrigation industry. So really look forward to learning more about irrigation, learning more about what's going on in the industry from the experts that know it. And I encourage you to check out our industry insight series. Really excited about what's bringing forth. Uh, what, what's on tap for that. Again, more information can be found at irrigation.org and irrigationshow.org. And finally, we have some several conferences coming up too. Kicking things off on October 30th is Irrigation 2020. During that, you'll hear from the Irrigation Association CEO, Deborah Hamlin. She'll be joined by our president, John Topham, and president like Brian Wynum. Uh, I would be kidding anybody to say this has not been a challenging year. With the cancellation of the irrigation show, the Irrigation Association is going through some changes. Uh, You can see that by the digital content we're providing. Uh, But we're also looking forward to some things that we're developing in 2021. Uh, With that said, the industry continues to do well. And we're very, very proud of that. Very, very supportive of it. 
and are proud of the full industry continuing to support each other through the Irrigation Association to ensure its success. So we're gonna kick off Irrigation 2020 on October 30th with that conversation and move on to a conversation about the industry at hand. Moderated by John Topham, our president, he'll be joined by our uh, IA award winners, Linda Whiteman and Brent Meekum and Stephen Smith. Linda Whiteman and Brett Meekham won the Industry Achievement Award this year for their work uh, for the indi irrigation industry during their, their tenures uh, in working for Hunter Industries and the Irrigation Association, as well as Brent's background. Uh, and also Stephen Smith for his work uh, for, for his work with the Irrigation Innovation Consortium uh, for the Innovator Award. We're recognizing him as well. So they're gonna talk about, not about their awards, they're gonna talk about the industry where it's been and where we're going and look to the future of the irrigation industry. So it'll be a very fun, this conference is free of charge on October 30th and we'll be opening registration for that very soon. Also coming November 5th, I have all kinds of new announcements and I apologize for sucking up the airtime here on the front end of the podcast, we're really excited about things we're developing. November, November 5th is our agricultural irrigation conference. We're really excited about this. Uh, highlights of the conference, I'll be joined by four CEOs of the irrigation industry on the agricultural side, the CEOs of Netafim USA, Jane Irrigation, Lindsay uh, Irrigation, and Valley Irrigation. They will all join me for a conversation about the agricultural industry. And we are very excited about uh, talking about ag irrigation the effects COVID has had on the industry and looking forward to 20, the rest of 2020 and 2021. This will also be two days after the presidential election. So it'll be exciting to get their thoughts on how the results of the election are gonna affect agriculture and agricultural irrigation. We'll also be joined by a panel of growers who grow under drip and grow under pivot and about their experiences in return on investment, productivity, as well as conservation. So I'll have a free flowing conversation about their experiences. And then we're gonna close things up with having a technology showcase. We're actually gonna stream live on our Facebook page. So again, very exciting. All this information can be found at irrigation.org as well as irrigationshow.org. Uh, just a small sampling of the, of the exciting stuff we have coming forward to everybody. Now, with that said, looking forward to our guest today. Like I said, this podcast is brought to us by Hunter Industries. Uh, and all of our conferences are also sponsored. And I, I, I don't want to, um, I, I want to say thank you to them as well. For information about all of our sponsors, please visit irrigation.org so you can see who sponsored all of our content regarding Industry Insights, IA University, all of our conferences are all listed at irrigationshow.org. And we'd like to thank everyone uh, for, for financially continue, continuing to financially support the Irrigation Association. Now, our little podcast here today is brought to us by Hunter Industries. I'm joined today by Kelsey Jacquard and Hunter, or Hunter, Warren Gorowitz with Hunter Industries. They're gonna be joining me today talking a bit about some of the irrigation technologies that are the forefront of implementation on the landscape setting specifically, as well as some of the regulations that we're seeing throughout some of the states on some of these irrigation technologies. It's a pretty cool conversation. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back at you after we're done to uh, close things out. Without further ado, here are Warren and Kelsey. Welcome. And we're here with Warren Gorowitz and Kelsey Jacquard with Hunter Industries. Hello, Warren and Kelsey. How are you guys doing today? Hey, John. Great. How are you? Good. Kelsey, how are you? Doing well. Thank you. Kelsey, Kelsey I will not let Warren take over this interview. Warren has been on this oh, podcast no. more than I have. So, and, it, and, it's, and it's the IS podcast. Pretty amazing. No, I'm just kidding. Warren, we love having you on. And uh, I think one of the last podcasts we recorded, you were on too. So I, uh, we really appreciate your continued support of what we're doing here at the Irrigation Association. He is a well, superstar. I He's a celebrity. I, no, I'm not a celebrity. I appreciate the opportunity. I love being a part of it. And, you know, if you pay a little bit more, you might get better guests. That's all. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I will triple our pay from zero. So okay. uh, that's, that's great. So he checks in the mail, Warren. How does that sound? S sounds great. <laughs> It's already Kelsey. spent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Kelsey, how long have you been with Hunter Industries? I've been there 10 years this year. Went by hey. fast. Yeah, it does go by fast, doesn't it? My goodness. Yeah. And uh, tell us what you do at Hunter. I'm the senior product manager for mechanical irrigation products. Okay. So and we'll go I into that in more detail yeah. in a second. 
Okay, yeah. that sounds, so I'm sure you're used to when you're sitting down with friends and they ask, oh, what do you do, Kelsey? You say that, you have to go into detail of what that means after you say yes. that, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll go into that in a second. And Warren, just for continuity's sake, tell us what you do at Hunter. Uh, I'm the director of corporate social responsibility and I've been with Hunter for 13 months. I say you hit your one year anniversary a little while I ago, right? Did hit my one year anniversary. Yeah. They, good. I'm still yeah. here. I did something right in the last year. It's good. Well, I'm glad something's <laughs> going well in 2020. So that's good. Yes. No kidding. This is one year for the record books in so many different ways. We could have a whole conversation just about that, but we won't. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I will. know we want to, we have, a. I personally have a whole litany of stuff I want to talk to you guys about, but I know there's one specific thing that I want to talk about. We haven't really talked about in the podcast in the past. And again, we'll get that to that in a second. However, um, I want to go into bit more about you guys first. Kelsey, what is your background? Like what, what got you into working for Hunter Industries? I was studying mechanical engineering at UC San Diego and Hunter Industries had an internship program. And so among other internships in college, I interned at Hunter. And then when I graduated, I came on full time and I've been there ever since. Oh, wow. That's great. So it's amazing to tie back what you're doing right now to decisions you make in college. Isn't it? Right? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Cause I can, you know, uh, this podcast is not about me at all, but I've been with the IA. I just hit my 12 year anniversary this last week. I hit my 12 year anniversary. No, this week, three, day, three days ago. I right, my, congratulations. I, so John, tell us how you got started in this industry. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> so, but you can, that's a different story for a different day. Uh, I'll tell you what, Warren, next time we can all get together uh, in person. I'll tell you that story. <laughs> but you can you can draw a line on connections to where I'm sitting right now uh, to decisions I made in college. So it's pretty it's pretty amazing how that works. And Warren, I think we've gone into you in the past as well. But you have yeah. a similar kind of story, right? This is things you decided in college and jobs out of college led to where you are now working from Hunter, right? Yeah, in a roundabout way. I mean, I, I yeah. in college in college I worked in the bookstore selling computers, <laughs> so I like technology. And uh, prior to that, I worked on a golf course when I was started when I was fourteen, and so I knew I wanted to be part of this industry in some aspect. And ironically, at the golf course I worked on, we installed an irrigation system, so I helped the contractor do some of the irrigation installation. I did that at a public course, and then I went to a private course and got to do the same thing with a totally different set of finances and experiences and that kind of stuff. And um, I, I don't think when you're in college, you think that you're going to work either in a job or an industry for your entire career. You just don't know. And I think yep. people probably folks that are in college now think that they'll change jobs every couple of years. And a lot of them do, but I mean, I, I was happy to find my home in the industry in the irrigation industry for 25 years. It was on the distribution side and, and, and now, you know, at the, towards the latter half of my career now kind of looking and in, going into the whole manufacturing side, which is fascinating to me and all the stuff I've had to learn. And Kelsey's had to put up with all my stupid questions over the last year about, <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy as a distributor compared to a manufacturer. It's a lot more complicated, yeah. but it's, it's really, uh, it's really cool. It's been fun. It's kind of like the next uh, phase of my career. Well, let's talk about technology real quick, because that's, well, let me take a step back here and, and talk about um, Hunter Industries, because this, is, this podcast is going to be about irrigation technologies. And um, so I want to start broad first and then dive in. And I know that the whole industry, and we've had various podcasts already talking about the impact of COVID-19 and the pandemic to our industry. And, and where things were back in March, April, and even May to where they are now, we're recording this in mid-September of 2020, things have changed with as a society, from a manufacturing perspective, from working perspective, and even from the investments going on in, in residential and commercial landscapes. And I don't want to take too much time talking about this, but just anecdotally, I'd say that the, the focus on the managed landscape and the value that landscapes bring to the table has increased significantly during the pandemic. And we're seeing that across the board throughout the industry. So I don't know, Warren, if you have any thoughts on that, or if you want to just agree, that's fine too. But, but that's what we're, that's what really what we're seeing right now. I think, and you know, and it ties, it go it ties across the entire industry too, which I think kind of interesting because in the beginning when everything was shut down, well, you couldn't even go out into a park. Obviously that kind of changed. And then you started watching things get a chance to be reopened. And you look at like the golf industry, golf courses are slammed right now because 
people are it's one of the few to, things you can do. They're not going to basketball. Can do. Yeah. And and yeah, I think I think that I mean, if you go to anytime I've driven by any of the big box stores or gone to the big box stores to buy stuff for my house or my landscape, um, they're packed. Yes. I mean, people are spent people aren't spending money on traveling. And so yeah, that's a long answer to say I do agree with you. Yeah. Uh, and the, the interesting thing is I think it's also giving our industry some more street cred too yeah. and some and I and some more value of what our industry does, especially for all the work that you have done in the beginning and other associations have done to really show that we are an essential business and all the all the lobbying so to speak that had to be done in order to make sure that where our industry was represented i mean that that's that's huge uh my goal is to get us more street cred warren that's what i do on a daily basis so it's all about street cred <laughs> definitely <laughs> highlighted the importance of usable outdoor space uh, so absolutely a absolutely all we can do now <laughs> yep that's absolutely right so kelsey i oh let's talk about about hunter and i want to talk about the the because you guys manufacture pretty much all components that make up a landscape irrigation system so do you want to just at a very high level talk about the different technologies because warren mentioned technology and that's what spurred his interest in getting involved in the irrigation industry uh let's talk about the technologies that either hunter even companies like hunter uh, provide to consumers, and the cons those consumers could be anywhere from uh, a sports turf manager to a commercial property owner to a homeowner who has a landscape that they want irrigated. Sure. I mean, we, we provide irrigation products from anywhere for the residential landscapes, so uh, smaller pop-ups, uh, rotary nozzles, spray nozzles, drip micro irrigation products uh, okay. of course the valves, let me stop you right there let me, let me stop you right there rotary uh -huh. nozzles and spray nozzles let's talk about the difference between pretend that i know nothing about irrigation at all let's talk about the difference between those two real quick uh i usually have to do this one visually though so okay, that's fine well on the video paint, paint, paint uh, the picture in my brain okay so spray nozzles are uh, traditional they just spray outwards right it's Kind of stationary. Not always encouraged to describe as controlled yep. flood irrigation, but that's kind of what it is, is okay. you're putting out a lot of water into a set controlled space as best as you can. And so it goes out like, right? And you're covering yep. a certain space. <laughs> and then rotary nozzles are the ones that look like little finger sprays. So they turn and they've got their streams. And what's nice about those is they're, they're not a flood irrigation. They're putting yes. down water really slowly. Uh, it actually mimics rotor type technology where you have those streams. Uh, so they, they do better against wind. They do better against pressures, higher pressures even. Uh, and they have higher uniformity too, because they can target the landscape a lot better. Okay. Now go on from there. I interrupted you and we're going to come back to that exact statement, but go on from there on what the uh, portfolio sure. is again. So we can do all that stuff, the little things for the residential landscapes. Uh, we have the valves that go along with it, the controllers, so the brains behind the irrigation technology. And then you can also, once you go into controllers, uh, do anything from conventional, so it just turns things on and off, to Wi-Fi. And then once you get into um, more commercial, larger scale jobs, uh, there's also cell abilities as well as Wi-Fi and conventional for the controller segment of the irrigation system. And I can't I, um, help but comment, don't forget the smart controllers as well. Yeah. <laughs> the whole I, idea I, of, I, uh, sorry. So the smart controllers. No, you're, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Uh, so your Wi-Fi, your weather-based, um, different methods for controlling the controllers are out there. So whether you do it from your cell phone or you do it from the controller itself, you know, there's, there's kind of two factions now there too. So people who want the new technology and people who are used to using what they've been using and, and we're here to provide both. So whatever you want, we're here to support you. I, um, I had a fortunate opportunity a few years ago to attend an event in Boston. Um, and uh, part of that event was a, a private reception at Fenway Park. Very nice. And we, uh, and I'm not a Red Sox fan at all. Like, at all. <laughs> like, at all. But you and were that day. 
Uh, 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 well, yeah, I guess, I, I guess so. It was cool being there. I have respect for the stadium and respect for the franchise. And uh, so part of that was we had to walk around on the field, in the, in the dugouts and walk around the outfield. And lo and behold, when I knelt down to look at the irrigation used, it was a hunter product um, at Fenway Park, which I want to make sure that I want to give a bigger picture of exactly where folks can see your technologies in places they can recognize. So it's even like, again, I, not trying to your, your, your competitors as well. You look at sports turf, what you see on TV with different soccer fields and baseball fields and football fields that kind of stuff is what we're seeing, what, where you can see your products in action. Golf courses too. Golf courses. Yeah. Exactly. No, it's fun. It's fun that we're able to make things that go as small as two feet, as far as 160 feet. Right. I mean, we have big rotors for synthetic turf sports fields too. Yeah. Uh, and we apply to all kinds of sports fields, which is, it's really cool. And then it's cool to go visit and see yeah. it. And then in action. Yeah. 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 It's fun. That's great. Now, Kelsey, Kelsey, that Kelsey What's that? What's someday. that why? I said someday we'll get to do that again. I know, right? Um, <laughs> and not just uh, not just cardboard people sitting in baseball stands. Like it's some yeah, sort no of kidding. Opian society. Uh, Kelsey, you've been with the with Hunter for ten years. Um, I've been the IA for twelve years. Warren, you you predate both of us by quite a bit, in uh, specifically within this industry. <laughs> I thought you were going to uh, say uh, my you're, age. you're not you're not you're not too much older than me, but uh, I just was not involved in irrigation before I joined the IA to a you know direct extent, indirectly I was. However, from the time that I've spent at the Irrigation Association, and, and Kelsey, I think you can agree with this, the technology advancements that we've seen in the development and adoption even, so not only what's been developed by the manufacturers, sold by distributors, and adopted by the end users, it has grown exponentially in the past 10 years where brand new technologies, you, you mentioned smart controllers, weather-based irrigation controllers, 10 years ago is about when they started becoming on the market. And now they're just in the marketplace, you know, and it's pretty amazing what's been done over the past 10 years. I mean, yeah. thoughts to that or <laughs> I just agree. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I didn't see what it was like beforehand. So when I started, that's when smart controllers were, it seemed to me like they, they should have already been popular. So I, yeah. As far as I know, they always have been, but I know that that's, I know that's not actually the case. Well, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I bring that up and we're on, 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 on you in a second because uh, part of that technology development and enhancement, there's several factors involved with this, right? And one is the marketplace, just the need to want to have more technology to manage your water in a landscape, commercial, residential setting. But then also you have different types of uh, requirements, regulations, and policies that help promote implementation of said technologies. I'll use WaterSense, which we've talked about ad nauseum in this podcast, as one example of a government program that's looking to enhance the marketplace for efficient technologies, starting out with weather-based irrigation controllers and moving on to different technologies. And that's something you have definitely seen from both the distributor perspective as well as a manufacturer perspective during your tenure in the irrigation industry. Yeah, it's, it's you know, if you go back on the technology side too, I wanted to just say that when I started when I was 14 at the golf course in LA and we installed this- That was new like three years system. ago, Warren. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, exactly. It was a few gray hairs ago. Um, <laughs> And we had this computerized irrigation system that had this $35,000 weather station that helped determine how often we should, how frequently we should be irrigating. And side story on that, it was on the roof. So not really a good place to put a weather, a weather station to get accurate representation when you have a whole golf course full of turf grass. But you know, anyway, it was a city golf course. So that's another story too. But to see that technology come all the way down to the consumer level and even more accurate at the $100, $200 level is pretty incredible. And, and it's also, I think it's brought up our industry in a different, in a lot of ways as well. Challenged our industry too, because it also, you know, smart technology requires smart people, you know? So it's, it's, it's one of those things that is a continuous uh, change for our industry as well. 
one of the things that there are several uh, barriers to efficient irrigation to ensure no water is lost and to make sure that we are not wasting one drop of water when it comes to landscape irrigation. One of those factors is people, right? Making sure that they manage the irrigation system pro properly, make sure they're designed properly, make sure the right technologies are used. Kelsey, when you were talking about the portfolio of products that, um, that Hunter specifically, and again, you know, other companies, manufacturers in the irrigation industry make, you mentioned pressure, pressure regulating. So let's start about that first. Let's talk about pressure first. Why is it important to even regulate pressure in a commercial or residential or any kind of turf, landscape, plant material, irrigation application setting? Well, pressure determines the health of your system. If you don't have enough pressure, you can't operate the system. And if you have too much pressure, then you start breaking things, uh, which leads to more water waste and, and maintenance. So regulating the pressure, uh, I mean, from the main line is important, depending on how much pressure you have. And then you can regulate the pressure at the valve, and then you can regulate the pressure at the heads. And that's where a lot of, uh, I think Warren brought it up too, uh, new state regulations are starting for pressure regulated products. Yeah, absolutely. And when we talk about water pressure, several factors come into play in this, right? And it, it could be, you know, turning on your faucet or shower head in your house. I'm out here in Maryland, you all are in California. It's gonna come out differently. I don't care what kind of, you could take the shower head off or the faucet, you know, the, the cap off and that's water pressure. So nothing is regulating that other than coming from the main line or any kind of whole home regulation, that's what pressure you have is it, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so the irrigation system is the same kind of thing where historically, you know, 10 years ago plus, a sprinkler was a sprinkler no matter what that pressure was coming onto your property, right? And that's part of the problem that we saw with managing uh, efficient irrigation systems in the past. Definitely. And if you had really high pressure that was coming in, and so now your, your little pop-up is seeing up to, you know, 80 PSI, let's say that, that spray nozzle that I was talking about earlier is just going to mist. And that's why we call them mist heads in certain yeah. parts of the country, right? So uh, we're used to seeing a lot of misting out of pop-ups. I mean, I still see it this morning, walking the dog, um, Little by but little. Looks, but it looks so pretty. It looks so pretty. Yeah, you get a rainbow. Yeah, it looks, oh, cool. it looks so pretty. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now we're used to seeing a lot of water getting used when we talk about irrigating the landscape. And that's where things like smart controls and pressure regulation do just help us elevate the irrigation industry in general, because we can mm -hmm. show that there are different ways of controlling irrigation. So let's talk about pressure regulating sprinkler heads real quick. This is something, and I brought up WaterSense. WaterSense has labeled these, and I, and I say labeled in that uh, the water, and I'll just 30,000 foot, and you can view, listen to old podcasts around the WaterSense program, but they, try, they work to enhance the marketplace for water efficient technologies, products, and services. So you can get WaterSense labeled uh, weather-based irrigation controllers, as well as pressure regulating um, spray sprinklers. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that they felt is very important. Both of these technologies are very important to promote efficient water use throughout landscape irrigation in the United States. Now, let's talk about what exactly a pressure regulating spray sprinkler does. So we talked about, so let's talk about that, Kelsey, just from, again, very novice 30,000 foot perspective, what exactly do they do? Sure, so uh, the water comes in from the bottom of the riser and the regulator on a spray sprinkler is generally in the riser itself. So the part of the sprinkler that pops up, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the riser, uh, the water goes through the regulator and it hits the nozzle at the top and creates a back pressure, which pushes down on the regulator and chokes, chokes an opening inside the riser. So what's nice about that is if your pressure does fluctuate, so your incoming pressure fluctuates anywhere from let's say 60 to 80 PSI, that regulator is also gonna fluctuate along with it to make sure that it has a constant output pressure. So that orifice inside the riser might open and close, but what pressure the nozzle ends up seeing is gonna be that same 30, 40, or 45 PSI uh, that that regulator will regulate to. One of the things that I've been asked um, by 
people in the industry, um, regulators, um, just various groups of, of, of individuals and organizations is, are, are these needed or necessary or relevant in all parts of the United States? Knowing that pressure is different in all parts of the United States. So if you're a consumer and you're working with your contractor or your contractor is going to a distributor and they're making a decision on pressure regulating versus non-pressure regulating, is it a, a manufacturer's recommendation that we just get pressure regulating just in case, or is this something that may not be necessary in all settings? That is a very fun debate to have. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. So <laughs> no, I don't. And, and hey, uh, and, and, so, you know, it's, I if mean, it's not been fleshed the, out, that's fine. I just, oh, you know, no, it's, it's something good. that we've been asked. It's, and it's a really good question because a lot of the states that are mandating pressure regulated sprays now, so I think there's six states. Uh, yeah, I can go in. So the states, so I can go into each one right now. So in 2018, uh, Vermont has a standard adopted. In 2019, uh, you had Hawaii and Colorado adopt a standard, as well as Washington State and California, and they all became effective in 2020 and 2021. So the states are California, Vermont, Hawaii, Colorado, and Washington State are the states we're talking about. Uh, so the states have decided, those states have decided that, yes, it is, it is worth it to go in and just say, only use pressure regulated heads. The benefit to that is no matter what your incoming pressure is, you can ensure that the nozzles are not going to see too much pressure. They're all going to be balanced, right? So that's important too, is that every single nozzle is going to see that same pressure. Interesting. Uh, right. So you'll get the same performance out of everything. Mm -hmm. And, and that's get... no matter what the pressure coming in is, it just regulates the whole system to have great uniformity across everything that's right. working within the system, right? As long as the incoming pressure is above the, the regulated pressure. I see. So then that, that's when you get into the debate about, are we being overly prescriptive? Um, a lot of new irrigation systems that go in already, especially if they're uh, commercial sites or uh, designed by you know, experienced irrigation designers and they know to use pressure regulation where they need to. Um, so really these regulations are kind of targeting the older systems, in my opinion, where we do like when I walk around and see these misting sprays, mm -hmm. if in the future my neighbor needs to replace one of their spray heads, they're going to have to replace them with a pressure regulated pop-up because I'm from California. Yep. It, it does become a problem though, if you're in a certain region where you don't have pressures over 40 PSI. Um, we've talked to customers, contractor customers who struggle to get 30 PSI at the pop-up. So now, now what do they do? Well, the, the spray heads themselves aren't going to create a pressure loss that will become a problem. Uh, you may lose about two PSI through the riser. Um, but once you're down to 25 PSI at the head, two PSI, you know, that starts to get important. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be spending three times as much for a head when they didn't really need it in the first place. So that's where the debate gets really, it gets kind of fun, but it's definitely. Yeah. A big and I think Kelsey and Warren and I have had these conversations. Um, gosh, I've known Warren for 12 years. So for 12 years now, and it's, um, you know, irrigation is, is different throughout the United States. And there's a whole host of factors on why it's different throughout the United States. And, and pressure is just one of those things. And so when we look at, that's why there's no national standard regarding this or mandatory standard. It, it states really know what's most important in those states relating to efficient irrigation. And I say no in that we need to work with states to educate them on the importance. They don't automatically know this. Yes. that we need to drive the discussion on what these pressure regulating sprinkler heads are and why they're important to, in those states, depending on the different pressures that are provided throughout that state. Yes. And, and I would just like to add to EPA water sense does a great job of working with the manufacturers to develop those standards. And so that's nice. And then as the states are developing their own standards, having EPA water sense along with manufacturers and other irrigation stakeholders is really important to be part of the conversation. Uh, and I don't know if we're always part of the conversation. For some of the states we were, but not all. 
Yeah, and fortunately, in the states that did bring it up, um, they're all they all referenced the water sense, except for California. California was dealt with through a. We're going to go and talk nerd talk right now. Yeah. Nerd talk and bring water to life. Uh, the California um, uh, standard was was brought forth by a regulatory process with the California Energy Commission. The yeah, rest of the states, the rest of the states notify or that we listed there, were through a legislative process. And each one of those legislative processes referenced the water sense label verbatim in the in the legislation. So um, it's and and the irrigation industry, uh, as and I say that just from representing manufacturers, dealers, distributors, uh, contractors, etc. Uh, we're not the only ones out there talking about uh, pressure regulating spray sprinklers, and we're not the only ones talking about the importance of standard adoption in different states. There are other organizations out there talking about this and irrigation is part of that larger discussion. And that's why it's important for us to continue to have our own voice because just because it may work, something may work in one state, it may need to be just tweaked a little bit in a different state, depending on the geography, region, topography, what you're growing, everything, right? So that's why it's just important to continue this dialogue with the different uh, entities that are regulating these, these technologies. So. It, is, it is really important for us to be part of the conversation. And, and usually uh, for new irrigation systems or new landscapes that are going in, uh, there many times there are state or local ordinances that require certain pressures to be used or, or they have the verbiage of uh, use the optimal pressure for the irrigation product. And so that's where a lot of the newer systems going in, I don't, you know, it's hard to say exactly, but I think most of them have been using the right pressure for the job. And so trying to tackle the, all the existing landscape that's out there is going to require perhaps more of these prescriptive measures. Uh, and that's, that's the direction that some of these states were going in. Yeah. And so if you have any suggestions for contractors, you may be listening to this podcast who either live in this state, in the states where it's mandatory, or just, you know, are learning about pressure regulating spray sprinklers, you know, what, what are, what's some of the kind of highlights you, you've talked to contractors about educating them about these technologies? Um, well, they're no different, you know, they're, you're putting in a pop-up, so it's the same install time. So that's nice. Uh, what's also convenient too, is if you do need to do any upgrades on a system or you have a busted riser because it got hit with an equipment or something like that, uh, for pro spray products, all of the internals are interchangeable. So you can just pull out the guts and put in the pressure regulated guts. And it's pretty, a pretty quick swap, you know, relatively speaking, you still have to get to the site. Is that, and, gut, and guts is a technical term. Used by the irrigation technical. Industry, right? Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm, just, the internal I'm talking computer. to an engineer. So I gotta, I gotta understand the technology. Oh, the technology I've, I've been out of engineering for six years. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in <laughs> more fun side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. For all the engineering friends I have out there, engineering is fun. Okay. We're good. <laughs> um, yeah, but also just that, I think I mentioned before, you know, you balance the system, which is really nice. So all of the heads, if you have pressure regulation at the heads are going to see the exact same pressure. So that's great. Um, I would add though, if you do need to troubleshoot sites, like maybe you do have surge pressures or something that are causing breaks somewhere along the line, uh, and you want to test your system pressures. Oftentimes you can do that at the heads uh, using gauges, but with pressure regulating heads, now you have to swap the internals out back into non-pressure regulated in order to actually see what your mm. line pressure is, uh, unless you can check it somewhere else along the line. So that starts to be a little bit confusing. Um, I've been on a site where we had some surge pressure, things were breaking, and they're checking it with a, with a little gauge that you can install on the pop-up. And they're like, no, I got 40 PSI all as well. It's like, well, but the, <laughs> the whole line up to that point is not seeing 40 PSI, you know, right, and right. thought it was seeing a surge up to 200 PSI. So it's like, Ooh, that's exciting. So you have to just, you might have to change how you troubleshoot things too, you know, just, just, be aware of where your regulators are um, and test pressures pre-regulator. 
one of the things that I'm, uh, I've talked to different folks at Hunter and, and, you know, different other manufacturers is, you know, what other states are we looking at next for the potential of having, um, uh, working in the, 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 this standard into their regulatory or legislative processes. Um, and Kelsey, I don't think I've talked to you specifically about this, but are there other states off the top of your head? And it's okay to say you don't know off the top of your head, but other states out there where you think that this may be a viable option to take care of some of the uh, pressure regulating or the pressure um, problems they've had in, in, in landscape irrigation management? I don't, I don't know if you mentioned Maine, uh, but I think Maine is on there too. Maine, and so so Maine, Maine is one. Last I saw, they were still uh, talking about it. And I have to go back to my notes to see if it was actually passed or not, but that's something that I need to go back and look at. Okay. Cause I, I've seen the legislation, I've seen the writing where yes. it would implement starting in January. Okay. Um, and then I, I think Massachusetts may have been on there too, but I don't, Massachusetts, I yeah, no, Massachusetts has not passed anything yet to my knowledge. Again, I could be wrong. Let me preface that. And yeah. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that has passed. I think it would be, I mean, I'm not going to speak for States, but maybe a little yeah, bit. No, 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 no. It would be interesting just to sit back and see how the implementation goes in these first mm -hmm. few states um, and see how enforcement goes, because that's still a question too. Who's, who is going to go out there and be the sprinkler police and check what's on the shelves if they're all pressure regulated or not. Yeah. Uh, and then you've also got some of the rules are based on manufacturing date codes. Uh, so like California, any product on the, sh any spray body product on the shelf with a date code of October or later has to be pressure regulated, but that means you can still have standard sprays from September before, right. um, Washington has that as well, uh, where the other States, it's like a hard set cutoff of January 1st, anything on the shelf has to be pressure regulated which makes it really hard for the distributors. Um, and it makes, you know, it just makes it harder for the industry in general. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to sit back for a minute and see how these first few states react to the new regulations, how the industry in those states reacts, um, and, and then make improvements from there. Very good. Um, Warren, you were a very good sidekick today. I want to commend you on that to, to, to Kelsey. And, um, so I want to, I just want to just recognize, recognize you as being the Robin to Kelsey's Batman today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying Kelsey, to think. I of, always, I always try to get Warren speechless at some point during. I'm trying to think of who you are, but I guess so. that. Yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> well, listen. I, uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to join me today. Um, Kelsey, I hope to have you on again, so maybe you can reach Warren's record for being on this podcast. Uh, so you're welcome anytime to come back on and talk about whatever you want. You know, it could be spray spray, yeah, it could be I'm anything. So. Warren's a better talker than I am, but I'm, I'm happy to come on anytime. So you let me know what you want me to talk about, John, and I can. Uh, I will, I will absolutely let you know. Uh, well, listen, have, um, thanks a lot. I uh, have a great fall. It's the beginning of fall. So have a great fall yeah. and um, we'll talk to you guys soon. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, all right. Thanks Warren and Kelsey. Really enjoyed that conversation. Hope you all did too. It's really enlightening to talk to folks in the industry about their experiences and how the technology is developed, what it is, how it's implemented, and then again, how it's regulated, how it gets into the marketplace, both from a consumer-driven perspective as well as a regulatory perspective. And that's really what we're seeing now with pressure regulating spray sprinklers. With that said, before I close things out, I did want to mention the sponsors that I talked about at the beginning of the, of the podcast. Of course, I want to thank Hunter Industries. The IA University, uh, which is going to be held beginning November 30th, that sponsor is Site One. The Ag Irrigation Conference, I think Valley, Lindsay, Jane, and Netafin. Uh, Industry Insights is brought to you by Netafin, Valley, and Ewing. And the new product contest is brought to you by Rainbird. Now, I promise we won't have this many sponsors mentioning at all of our podcasts, but we do have a lot of content with the cancellation of the irrigation show. Uh, that removes it a, four, a quarter of the revenue for, uh, to the Irrigation Association. So we want to thank those, those companies who continue to invest in our programming, to invest in things like 
this podcast, like Hunter Industries, as well as the digital content from all the companies that I just mentioned. Uh, we are going to be developing more podcasts for you to listen to. So hopefully we'll get some more uh, out to you soon. I can promise you that. And we'll have some really interesting guests down the road too. So with that said, be safe, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to download. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Bring Water to Life. This episode was brought to you by Hunter Industries, the global leader in landscape irrigation and outdoor lighting. At Hunter, our core values of family, social responsibility, innovation, and customer satisfaction drive everything we do. Our commitment to our valued customers, partners, and the industry at large is stronger than ever before. While we cannot connect face-to-face, -face, rest assured that we are here with you every step of the way to support your business with world-class products, tools, and training. The game has changed, the partnership hasn't. Learn more at HunterIndustries.com.